<laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, to try uh, uh, to make a synthesis or comparison of the last two speakers and, <clears throat> and others. That would be completely absurd. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to try to uh, make some distinction and try to see if compare to give at least uh, um, to um, distinguish several ways in which uh, uh, we can understand uh, emotional responses uh, to fiction. Uh, so <clears throat> yeah, so this is my aim. Compare, and I would like to compare. I think two general models uh, which aims to explain how the attitude of imagination toward given contents produces emotion that differ from emotion in response to the same content which are uh, believed or, or, or perceived. Um, so I, I'm going to assume that there is sense in which to entertain a fic or to uh, uh, see a fiction or experience a fiction is uh, having a specific attitude of imagination towards a content or maybe something close if you want to say that you believe that, that it is fiction or that. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, dispute that. I, I'm going uh, to focus on, given that you have that sort of uh, attitude towards uh, imaginative attitude or something of the like towards uh, content, how, um, how um, we can understand how the, the attitude is um, uh, plays a specific role in producing those peculiar emotion that we that are the emotion uh, that we have in response to um, fiction <clears throat> and it seems uh, to me that it, it cuts the, the debates in, in two uh, in two camps uh, so there are those who say yes um, the the imagination attitude has a central role and these are the simulation models um, for example, the one posed by Nichols and, and um, Stitch, then by Nichols, I think Gregory Curry uh, sort of adopt uh, the simulation approach going the same way, and maybe the regulative model also seems to or may be understood as uh, going that direction. So that, that may be the proposal from um, uh, Pascal. Uh, and Jérôme, and, 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 and certainly <coughs> the, the regulative model has some uh, attraction because there is all this uh, work presently on uh, how emotions can be regulated, and it's tempting to think that uh, uh, the case of fiction is a subcase in which we somehow uh, regulate our emotions somehow. Um, and then there is the other camp who is uh, different, but I think philosophers like Lamarck or Peter Carithers or Derek Machavis, uh, who are denying that the attitude of imagining is, uh, makes the, the important uh, difference. Okay, so uh, I've been happy to, to <coughs> make this, this, this in, in little boxes. Um, so the, the first view, the attitude makes a difference. So, um, uh, so it may, can make a, a difference either on the appraisal process or on the emotional response, or maybe on both. And you can defend the, the attitude makes no, no difference. And that's why the, the arrow here uh, comes directly from the content, which is imagined as uh, producing, uh, as going through an appraisal process to produce uh, an emotional response. So here, I have also that I'm going to accept, at least for the discussion, that um, emotions are produced by some kind of appraisal process. The appraisal theory of emotion is certainly the dominant theory. The affect program seems to be compatible with this view also. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to, to suppose um, this. So uh, a preliminary remark. Um, so we can, <coughs> different things can be put in the uh, content. So we can imagine uh, something that are propositions or images or, or whatever, uh, but there is. But you can also believe that uh, you can imagine the, the the content can be more complex, and it can be in fact some attitudes. You can, for instance, imagine uh, you can have attitude in which uh, you would imagine that you believe a certain content, or imagine that you desire a certain content, 
Or maybe you can, or maybe that, that could, could be put another way around saying that you have, as the input, you have something like quasi-desire or desire-like attitude, that's all I think. I think there are potential difficulties. I'm not going to give strong arguments for one view against another one. I don't, I don't have enough time for that. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to raise some potential difficulties with uh, each of the, the views that I'm going to present. Uh, so I think there are potential difficulties to adopt, for example, the idea that there are desire-like uh, uh, attitude or quasi-desire. Quasi for instance, it has been argued by Nichols uh, that imaginative resistance, the difficulty that you have to um, imagine um, things that are uh, to, to imagine uh, having uh, a positive attitude toward what you yourself think is repulsive or something like that. So if, if you have this kind of resistance, it seems that it's hard for you to have the kind of desire or, or, or attitude that are not really uh, close uh, to yours. And I think this is uh, quite intuitive. Um, moreover, it, so... Um, um, uh, the, the work on the default network seems that uh, projecting oneself in the future or in another, on another's shoes seems to rely on the default network and which uh, encompasses the implementation of episodic autobiographical memories. So if it is true that um, your, your, your assessment of what, what, what would be the desire of someone in a certain situation in fact relies on your as a, as a base to make this assessment, uh, rely on your autobiographical uh, memories, uh, then probably the response is linked to what are your desire or attitude or something like that. And it will be more difficult uh, to have something, some, have some arbitrary desire-like attitude as an input uh, <clears throat> to uh, see what kind of emotion you would have then. Okay, so I, I, I take away those, uh, these the possibilities uh, given by my two, and I focus, and I focus on, I, I will only consider that the content is propositional or image, I, I wouldn't say nothing about that, but I would just say that it's, it's a simple content, is not an embedded content. Okay, so the simulation models. <clears throat> so it's something like that. You imagine a certain content, and then there is an appraisal process um, of this content, but at the same time, the imagination um, that you, because you have an, an attitude of imagination, then it does something to the emotional response, um, and it is often said that the the the, the process is offline. And uh, that means that the, the, the motivational output is uh, suppressed. And uh, at least, so, so it's always the idea that when you, you fear in the, in, in the cinema, you're not, not flying away uh, out of the cinema. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> um, so objection has been raised uh, by um, for instance, uh, Peter Carruthers. Uh, it seems that, in fact, there are motivational outputs. We we want we have some uh, desires. We have the desire that the hero to survive. Maybe those uh, we, when we have some pretend play, uh, there is also behavioral. So you are you starting with uh, uh, imagining a certain situation. Maybe it triggers some emotions, and then it leads you to uh, to continue your pretend play in, in a certain way. Uh, and moreover, there are certainly uh, long-term motivational effects. So I may come to desire to be as admirable as the hero was. Um, there are other uh, problems. One is that uh, why, why is it really necessary to put, off, uh, to put offline the, the output? Um, after all, uh, since it is not true in the real world that the hero is in danger, uh, there is nothing to do. Even if I desire 
to do something. Even if I desire the hero to escape, uh, after, after all, there is nothing to do. So um, we can leave the, we can keep the desire. It, it, it doesn't, it's not really a problem because you're not going to act on this, uh, on this desire. Um, uh, I know that I'm not in danger. I also, even if I'm, I want the hero to survive, I know that I'm not in danger. And uh, leaving the movie will be frustrating. So I, I'm just staying here. And there is no problem about that. I don't, there is no necessity to suppress uh, the motivations that come, can come uh, out of the process. So I think the, the offline procedure is useless. And the output seems to be the full output of the open result process, which means that it encompasses uh, some, may encompass some emotion, some motivations. Um, well, there are also two, uh, two, two further uh, problems. Um, it seems that imagination is, is very crucial for practical uh, reasoning. We, uh, Therefore, it's, it would be bizarre if the motivational response was cut off because we would lose an important information about our response to potential situations. And so one reason we want to, to see what we, what we, in a certain, certain, certain situation, what would be our motivations. So we present to ourselves this, this situation and then the certain emotion is triggered by the presentation, in ima the ima by imaginatively presenting the, a certain content, a certain emotion. And, and if a motivation is also present, then it, it helps you. If you have only the, the, the emotion, then maybe it will be harder to, uh, to use this, this process to uh, make some kind of practical reasoning, what, what would be reasonable to do, what would be a good thing to do or not, etc. Um, so that's a problem. And the other problem is that the simulation model uh, also postulates that the simulation produce exactly the same emotion. Uh, if we take apart uh, its most motivational component, and uh, <clears throat> this this seems uh, intuitively false, and maybe this is a point I'm I'm going to to come back because uh, this is this may be a problem for other views also. Uh, but the, the 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 general idea is just that when you have emotion toward fiction. But there is the motivational element, but there is also some other subtle uh, differences. And uh, it, would be, it's, it seems to be bizarre to say, well, there is a motivational element is cut off, but for all the rest, it's exactly the same. It seems to be uh, wrong. So maybe moving uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the radically uh, extreme uh, opposite view, uh, we can say, so the, the no difference model could be, yes, I imagine that there is a certain content. The attitude of imagination plays no role. And then there is an appraisal process and an emotional response. I think this is uh, close to Peter Carrefour's or Peter Lamarck uh, views. But there are potential difficulties. At least some emotion in response to fiction are different. And so that, that's the point that I just made. Horror film can be hilarious. Uh, fear in response to fiction seems to defer. Uh, to defer, um, that's maybe the, the, <coughs> uh, the paradox of tragedy. So sadness also seems to defer in some way, um, or, or at least it's plausible. And uh, also it seems that facing real sufferance, uh, we feel required to do something. And this apparently diminishes or alterates our emotion. I think that, that you can imagine that uh, uh, you are not required by a real situation um, when you are in the fictional uh, setting uh, you are not required to do something and, and suddenly it has some influence on your emotion especially if, for instance you're not going to have the guilt or the fact that if you not do something or there is some kind of emergency to that you're really facing and that suddenly has an effect on your on your emotion now i will come back to this point also later on so uh this is somehow too simple. Uh, um, so maybe moving back, uh, the, the possibility would be to, to have a kind of uh, regulation model. Uh, and the regulation model uh, it would be, seems to be nice because you can have a, 
a nice distribution of work. You have an, an appraisal process uh, which starts from the content. And then because you have an, imagine, an attitude of imagination, then you, there is a regulator who do some kind of, uh, of work. And, and, and the work is, uh, in, in a, uh, so is, is different, it's not the same as the work that in the simulation model because it's the regulator uh, work on the appraisal uh, itself. Well, so um, <clears throat> I think the uh, a potential difficulty is that um, certainly we, we regulate our emotion uh, consciously and when a scene uh, in a fiction, for instance, is unbearable, we can remind ourselves that it is a mere fiction. After all, the actors are well paid, so there is, it's not rational to be in such a situation. And it, produce, uh, it does produce an effective reappraisal. So it seems to be efficient in some sense. So we do, uh, it, it's a potential thing, we do it, but um, the problem is, it's, it seems that we, it doesn't really answer to, to the, the, our problem because we, we want a, a description of our immediate response to fiction uh, without some, some kind of conscious uh, reappraisal. So to be interesting, it, it must, the reappraisal must be uh, to say that any emotion of fictions uh, are different because uh, you have to say that there, are, there is always uh, a reappraisal, and this reappraisal is unconscious and is systematic. But if the stimuli from fiction are always appraised in, in a certain way, we are not really anymore talking about reappraisal. We are just saying that there is a different appraisal. And uh, so it doesn't, it, in the end, it seems that the regulation model is, is uh, kind of red herring. <laughs> What we need to do is to understand clearly what, what, is, what, is, what is different in the appraisal. What makes, uh, 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 when you see a fiction, what is it that uh, changed the appraisal? Uh, so I think we have to move back to the difference model, but to uh, try to enrich it uh, in some way. So if the question is, um, Okay, so what is the difference? What is the difference in appraisal in, uh, that, when we, that we have uh, when confronted with, with fiction? Well, there is a non-reductive hypothesis. Uh, you, would, you, you may uh, appraise stimuli of fiction as, as fictional. Well, that's, uh, so the, 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 the view would be that besides appraisals in terms of goal congruence, copying potential adjectivity, that kind of, of things that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, appear in the appraisal theory of emotions, you would have a kind of sugenary uh, type of appraisal and that would switch uh, uh, to uh, another set of emotions. Um, well, that's a, a bit of, of but that don't, first, it doesn't seem very plausible. Uh, but, but secondly, I think it's, uh, and we are here defending that uh, emotion are completely different class of emotion. So maybe, in fact, we are defending a view close to the view from Walton, for instance, uh, uh, and back maybe to a kind of regulation model. I, because the, 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 the thing that turned the key could be produced by the, the fact that you have an attitude of imagination from the, from the beginning. But in any case, I think um, um, it seems that our emotional responses to possibilities uh, should not be, should not come apart uh, because one, once again, they are supposed to indicate the emotion we would have if these possibilities were real. So once again, I think it would be bizarre uh, to say that we have, uh, so, or maybe the switch would do not, not too much, but, but then why is it there? It seems a bit bizarre. So I think that the, the most plausible uh, view would be a reductive hypothesis about uh, 
what difference in the appraisal. So we, we need to, have to, to point features of stimuli from fiction that contribute systematically to their specific appraisal. Um, and, but since you are adopt a reductive hypothesis, these appraisals uh, are, are not fiction specific. That seems uh, so. Um, which features? <laughs> so, um, if, if in fact the, the 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 no difference model was somehow simplified, but in fact, when you have when you experience, uh, for instance, a film, uh, then maybe there is a, an imagined content, but you you also have other. Uh, experiences. You are here, sit in the cinema, uh, so you have other uh, content which is going to uh, feed the appraisal process. So uh, then the question is, what is peculiar with, with fiction uh, is that fictional content come with another content that is not fictional. And somehow the appraisal has to integrate some somehow two flow of uh, features that may be intention and uh, that may be uh, a starting point to explain why uh, emotions uh, in response to fiction are different um, so it seems to me that uh, the this integration uh, will have two main effects. First, uh, there will be some competition among the stimuli, stimuli. So the fictional stimuli will be more or less neutralized depending on their salience and our endogenous uh, attention. So I can, and, and this, uh, you, you, you can uh, feel this if you compare, for instance, a theater experience, a film experience, and a film experience in a very immersive uh, setting. So, so in these cases, is gradually you have more stimuli coming from the fictional world, if you want, or the image with our mind, and the real thing is it diminished. Um, and and so it's the stimuli are like that, but you can also through your attention move uh, more to one uh, toward the real or uh, far uh, away from the the real uh, the real. Uh, uh, stimuli. So that, that's one element. And I think there is a, a second a very important uh, element is that fictional stimuli do not require us to do something, a point I, I have raised already. So I li our life is not directly threatened or concerned. So except for very low level stimulus like loud noise, uh, things coming to your face, which is very low level response that you have. Maybe there, there are fears. But if we take those apart, uh, you don't feel bodily endangered in the, uh, in the cinema. Your experience is by empathy for those guys who are uh, uh, in the scenario uh, in danger. So, it's, it's the, so the contrast is, is something which uh, exists independently of fiction. We can, we, so you see, you can. So being in the movie is like seeing a lion in its cage. To contrast with seeing a lion out of its cage, if, even if the lion is not roaring at you, uh, suddenly the, the, its simple presence uh, is uh, very, very different from an emotional point of view. So um, fiction could be understood as facts about a distant past, which uh, precisely. Uh, both does not seem to trigger guilt, shame, or remorse, uh, which are precisely self-reflective uh, emotions. They do not require us to do something. So, uh, th so the distance of, of, of this past is, is a psychological distance, uh, for sure. Uh, if you consider Greek antiquities, or then you are certainly not concerned, but maybe you, you, there are other contexts where you can feel a strong link uh, with some past of your nation or whatever, so it would change. Um, <clears throat> so then there will, be, there will be a dissimilarity. So uh, the view, the, the second criteria, the second element that would make, that will explain why uh, 
emotions in response to each other different uh, in virtue of being appraised differently is that there is no there is a yes no relevance uh, to a certain self uh, and in the case of fiction this there is a self which is appraised as not concerned by fiction as it is by the distant past so in somehow by having different uh, relationship to our different to different past uh, we would have the means to have the different response that we have to fiction so what is this self so that's that's uh, a big a big problem and so it seems that from the the data of uh, uh, Jérôme and uh, Pascal and, and the numerous collaborators uh, it is not the autobiographical self since precisely it correlates with uh, emotions uh, so uh, emotions to fiction and emotions to real both uh, relies on autobiographical facts uh, so it's not and I, I, I suggest that it's not the what, what neuroscientists call the declarative self so what is what you, what you can uh, say about yourself so it's not semantic information about you which makes a difference nor even some kind of concept of your identity or something like that uh, it would be something more implicit in neuroscientist vocabulary and and i would say more practical so certainly it's, it may involve uh, your body um, and and certainly what matters uh, to you but um uh, here it's, it's uh, so I have to apologize. This is only a kind of uh, first try, and I, 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 I'm certainly this other notion of self, which is really need to be worked out. But uh, this is a, a just a little first try, and I, I was not here to present a paper, but just to make some proposals <laughs> or maybe clarification. So. Uh, I would say maybe this this self is the one that is um, relevant in guilt and remorse, and which is involved when I feel that I must do something that I am in danger, and this self is very much linked to action. Um, and on the contrary, we we could say that when uh, it is a self that is not activated when you have a purely empathetical, empathetical uh, response without a pull to do anything. So maybe why emotions of fictions are, uh, can be uh, very uh, strong is sometimes because since you have nothing to do, uh, you do not inhibit, inhibit uh, those emotions. Uh, if, if there is a disaster just here, Oh, you don't start to cry. <laughs> you do something and maybe that represses your emotion. But on the contrary, if you are seeing this in a film or in a very distant past, uh, you can, you, ha you don't, you, there is nothing to do. So what is, you, you can just uh, empathize with what's happening and uh, be completely uh, free or unconcerned in the sense of nothing yeah, there is nothing that you have to do so that's my the start of a proposal if you want to try to make my application <clears throat>